Welcome back to the summer. First up, if you haven't heard, the Summer Podcast has released a free app in iTunes and the Google Play Store. Go to iTunes or the Google Play Store, type in the Summer Podcast, the Summer Podcast, hit enter, and voila, there it is. Free for everyone, free for your listening enjoyment. Without ever leaving the app, you have direct access to all of our podcasts, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram accounts. It's a hot joint. You're going to really enjoy it. It also has a button on there to share it. We appreciate all the support. Make sure you check that out in iTunes or the Google Play Store. Free app from the Summer Podcast. Today, we have Rafer Skip to my Lou Austin. Rafer Austin, a.k.a. Skip. Everybody knows that. You remember when you used to go to Foot Locker and Foot Action back in the days? Get a pair of and one shoes. With those shoes came that VHS mixtape, and one mixtape. Well, guess what? He was the featured guy on that N1 mixtape tour. It all started with him. He's a New York City basketball legend. Everyone knows him. He can walk through any borough and any park, and they know who Skip is. Call out Skip. Everybody knows him. Skip is going to spend some time with us today. He's going to talk about his role to stardom, the good, the bad, and everything that came with it. You are going to enjoy this podcast. You're going to be talking back to your radio. You're going to be laughing with us. You're going to enjoy it. Step by step of the way, you're going to feel like you are actually in the moment with us. It's going to bring back a lot of memories. Let's get into it because I'm excited about it. And it's the summer. <laughs> we back. This is Marlon Lowe. You got Moel Rod. And it's Mr. Pew. Come on, man. Man, we we no, we gonna we gonna let Pew get that, Mr. Pew. We got to get to the main dude that's in the yes. building right now. We got Rafer Austin, aka Skip to my Lou, New York legend, playground legend. What's up, man? The original. Happy, I'm happy to be on it. Be on here with y'all, man. The, ori- it. the original Don Dada. <laughs> the original Don Dada. For all you kids out there, listen. Y'all look at all these mixtapes nowadays. You see this. You see that. Y'all googling this, googling that. Rafer, if you don't know, because most of y'all don't look at history. He is That's the a shame. original, like. The N1 fir- mixtape, the first one, it was based upon this guy right here. So, if you're listening, or if you got that app, and you're viewing, this is my man. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> no doubt about it. That's the reason why I started watching the N1 <laughs> mixtapes. That I was in that high out. school. That was 12, 13 years ago. I get that a lot, and it makes me... Uh, <laughs> it lets me know how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was the, hey. That was some VH1 tapes. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I threw right. I threw a term. I was throwing tournaments back in the days, right? And what people don't know is when I had the, the tournaments called the grand finale. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one sent me mixtapes for every kid that participated in our event back mm-hmm. in the days from the from the first volume one, two, three, and you know we kind of fell out after the third one or they fell off. I still <laughs> got every last one of them. You got to keep now, obviously them. Before, you have to keep them. Yeah, I got I got Classics. the VHS all of them. But like you, you, you were there. That's the one thing you know they can't take you know away from you. You, you were right there with us. Mm-hmm. We, I mean, through the good, bad, and the indifferent. Yeah, <laughs> no there, doubt. Was some there was some indifferent times and different was. people. It was. It definitely was. Yeah. Man, let, let, let's go back to the beginning, man. Like we had Gary Charles on, mm-hmm. and he spoke highly of you. So there were times where like he would have to come and get you. Y'all have a game. Like, yeah. Man, we got to go get this dude. Yeah. Man, where Rafe at? Yeah. You'd be on the corner shooting dice. Hey, listen, man. The, uh, one thing about it, the good thing about Gary Charles and that story is he knew who to come get. He wanted to win that game. So that's the one thing I could take away from that. Is like, you know what? Talk. I feel special, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I feel special, Gary. Uh-huh. Now, now, how old were you at that time? Man, I want to say 16. Uh, 15, it's in between that 15, 16, 17 year old uh, range. Mm. So, so at that oh. at that age, 15, 16, you were considered a legend in the neighborhood? Man, you know, before my time, I was definitely before my time. And, and I, you know, at that age, you don't really think much of it. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm still figuring out uh, and meeting the legends that were already considered legends in New York City. You know, mm-hmm. I'm still trying to meet the Pee Wee Kirklands and the Earl Manigos and uh, Earl Manigos. all these, you know, all these guys, you know, and, and, and yet and still at the age of six, 16, I want to say, they 
made put out there that I'm that guy as a legend. And so, you know, when, when my friends and I are going to these games, these summer tournaments in New York, I'm like, all these people are hanging on fences. I'm walking the park. They're just yelling, oh, he's here. And I'm sitting <laughs> like, yo, I'm just coming to play a game, and I can't wait to get back to my neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yo, yeah. I, I really, you know, I'm from Queens, New York. Most of the times we might have played with in Manhattan, Harlem, uh, Brooklyn, the Bronx. So, uh I'm a guy. I'm like, man. I just want to get back around the way and do the around the way stuff. You know, we. You know, unfortunately, it wasn't. I wasn't and shouldn't be doing the things I was doing. If I, you know, gambling on the street corner and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, That's when you grow up in the inner city, those are the things you are, you're doing. I mean, you're, all your peers are doing it. And then, you know, I fell victim to those things. Man, it's, it's like uh, the very first time I seen the, the mixtape. I wasn't there at that time. Mm-hmm. This is my. Uh, I'm have, I was definitely in high school. I mean, you had to go to the store to try the shoes on, mm-hmm. and just you to show, yeah, yeah, just to get, just to get the mixtape. And that ten minutes, I mean, I watched that shit a million times. <laughs> but the only way you watch it many times is your tracking had to be good on your VH1. Like, yeah, if you didn't have good tracking <laughs> on the, the VHS, on the VCR. if your tracking was nothing with your VCR, you 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 had to go back and get a whole buy a whole new shoe and get a whole new tape, man. <laughs> yeah, that's no. crazy. Now let's skip. Check this out. For a couple of things. First, who gave you your nickname? Uh, Duke you Tango. Remember? These are two guys who were doing the Rucker uh, League. They were the, the, the commentary for Rucker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Legend. they gave me they they gave me a nickname. They gave everybody a nickname. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and our nicknames stick with us. And I didn't, I, again, I had no idea this was going to stick with me my, the rest of my life, but they, they gave it to me. Now, when you, how'd you feel about when they first called you Skip? Actually, the like, first thing they gave me was the Energizer. The uh, energizer. Because when I first, mm. when I was 15, I was playing out there. You know, Rucker at that time, when I was 15, it was still an adult league. You mm-hmm. know, guys were 25 and older playing. So when I'm, I'm out there, I sub in. And I was the guy, I subbed off the bench a lot when I was my first year of playing. So I sub in. <laughs> I would just get right to work. You know, I'd cross somebody <laughs> over, busy. I'd dish the ball, somebody <laughs> dunk it, and he, they all oh, coming into the game, the energizer, and everybody like, yeah, there's a little kid. And then the following year was when it was no more subbing into the game. I'm, I'm on the court with the starters, and, you know, I'm doing my deal. And they changed it. When I came down to the move, uh, it was a three-on-one break. I just let the ball bounce. I'm skipping. I was just trying to lure the defender to go for the ball. He went for the ball, and I wrapped it around my uh, back and threw it to my teammate. He just caught it and dunked it. And he was like, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new nickname for the energizer. And it just <laughs> Took off like wildfire, and there it is. <laughs> the legend yeah, has begun. Like wildfire, man. So you remember that play? Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Those times, uh, I remember a lot of those <laughs> games in town back then. I mean, you know, when you're a basketball player, you remember. I remember a lot of my games in the NBA. Believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Now, 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 talk about your, your matchups with the uh, the legend and rest in peace, man, uh, Ali Mo. No, we, we. It's funny. We've been matching up against each other since ten years old. Wow. And we've been playing in leagues in New York uh, since we were 10. And we would go at it since 10. We played against each other in high school. Uh, we beat them. I think I had 32. Uh, we, we beat them in high school. Uh, it was a Thanksgiving classic, and we beat them in that. And, you know, so this was ongoing. And every summer while we were in high school, we played against each other in Rucker, uh, different leagues around Harlem. And we would always battle each other. I mean, and, and one thing about him and I, it was just basketball battles. You know, I, I've had battles with some other people, and they would try to take it past the basketball and want to take it off the court. But, again, that's New York City. Yeah. Uh, but Alamo was tremendous talent. We were supposed to go to Fresno State together. Uh, I and remember I, mean, I remember, you know, coming back home when I was in the NBA, and he would always say, man, I regret not going with you. Uh, mm. You know, Coach Talk had come, came to Rucker, uh, and we he watched both of us play. And he said, man, you two guys are what I need to come to Fresno State. Now, the first time I saw you, but this is before the mixtapes, mm. I'm a huge Slam Magazine connoisseur. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> that. Is. Definitely that. Huge. I got. I still got. I was. I was at the crib trying to look for. It. I'm like, damn, where is this magazine at? Because I have a lot of old classic mm-hmm. stuff, and it said the the best point guard you never heard of. And I'm like, I'm, at, I'm I'm from Chicago. I'm, I'm at the crib, and I'm looking at like. Who was this dude? Fresno State. Where is Fresno State? You know what I'm yeah. saying? And he was on the cover of the magazine. Yeah, you know, it, it blew How my did mind. That happen? It, it till this day. It blew my mind. Ronnie Zidell was a guy who pushed for me to be on the cover. Ronnie Zidell, uh, I went to Cardoza High School in New York City, Queens, New York, and Ronnie Zidell went to this high school uh years before I got there. Um so when he heard I was going there, and the coach, coach Ron McLeod told him, "Listen, I got a diamond, dynamite point guard coming to my school, man." Mm-hmm. And, and you know, he came to watch me play. He he agreed. Yeah, man, this kid is dynamite. <laughs> if you fast forward a few years after the mixtape was released, I guess uh, something like that. I was coming out of junior college, going to uh, Fresno, Simon Fresno State, 
in that summer, we were billed to be that class coming into Fresno State, myself, Chris Heron, Chris Heron. Uh, Winfred Walton, Terrence Robeson, Tremaine Folks, Avondre Jones. We were billed as that uh, we was going to be, we were coming in rank like top 10. Mm-hmm. And he, Ronnie Zidell pushed the slam editors and everyone, the owner, to listen, you got to put this guy in the cover. They, he called me, said they're not going to do it. I'm like, I don't think they would do it either. I'm, I'm, I'm not, dude, I'm not a, a Iverson. I'm not Garnett. I'm not these guys of Kobe Bryant that should be on this cover. And they went with it. And and till this day, Ronnie says, man, he couldn't believe that uh, that cover did well. Uh, um, the editors, you know, the people that come, they thought it was going to be bad. This is going to be bad for them. This is going to take the uh, Slam Magazine company probably down a notch yeah. because this is a un- guy that's unheard of all he's known for is a street ball hmm. and, but yet they didn't understand at that time the 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 uh, the height of street ball at that time right. and, mm-hmm. and the following street ball had mm-hmm. because the beauty of it at that time too was unlike today if I want to type in a kid's name I just type into the internet so right. we didn't have right. any of that yeah. so when I saw you on the cover I don't I don't know where Fresno State is at. I don't know who you are. You ain't in the NBA. Like, who is this yeah. dude? And the good thing is, is what, what helped it out, too. People don't say yeah. God bless his soul, too, is that he's going, I'm going to play for Jerry Tarkanian. So it's kind of like, okay, he's going to play for this legendary coach. No doubt. All right, who had Larry John State's home. So wait, it's got to be something behind this. And you said the right thing. They had to take Ronnie Zardell's word for it. His word. See? And it wasn't like he had tons of footage. Yeah, so, right. like I said, we didn't have internet. I don't even think... I think it's probably the first year of cell phones. <laughs> you know, for real. I think we were coming out of that beeper stage into the cell phone era. So, right. I remember the big, great flip phone. It looked like you had a big house phone on your on your ear. Mm-hmm. But And they had to go with word of mouth. It was right. word of mouth. Now, all that's history. I want to kind of go back. We can we skip way forward. I want to go back to the mm. beginning before the Energizer, before <laughs> Skip to my loop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. When did you start playing basketball? Oh, basketball came into my life five five years old. Probably before I can remember back as far as five. You know, mm-hmm. um, um, I'm, I'm amazed that people can remember that. Remember when they was two? But now yeah. <laughs> I remember back when I was five and. Uh, Growing up in Queens, New York, there was parks and playgrounds everywhere, and 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 it was no big deal about letting your five year old or six year old walk to the park with everyone else. No mm-hmm. doubt, you yeah. know. Nowadays, can't do that we now. can't let you can't let your kid walk to the corner without walking somebody. Or better yet, he's not going to the corner. Mm-hmm. But now where we come from, it was no big deal. So going to the park every day in the summertime was huge for all of us. Everything happened in the park, and I started playing basketball, and I realized how to. Uh, you know, Im- Im- imitate or emulate mm-hmm. the things that I'm watching and seeing, and, so, and that's what happened to like myself and my friends. We all did the same thing every day, and that was being a part. And so, so check this out. So that's what I'm saying. Why are you saying you emulating? Because I'm going back to that. I'm thinking, Ray, for when I look and I think skip to my Lou, right? And you know, you and I, we in the gym a little bit still mm-hmm. together, and your handle, like. Is sick, still crispy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my jump shot. I like uh, not to cut all it off. People ask me the other day. I was in the gym. People ask me, "Man, you still got game?" I said, "Listen, I might not have all my game, but one thing about this basketball, I, I got it on a string." <laughs> hey, 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 he was whipping that thing. I'm sitting back laughing, like, "Oh, geez, okay." So, was there somebody in specific when you was like, when you start? Did you start just working on your handle? Did you see somebody do something? He's like, "Yo, I need that in my game." I've, I've watched people do things. Uh, that was the main thing as I watched. It, it's, we always had people help you. You know, I had people come pick me up even at six, seven years old, put me in little tournaments and stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, the park was still something I look forward to going to. Yeah. Like, so mm-hmm. I, I would come back from playing these little uh, tournaments with these guys. And then, I, man, please get me back to the park because that's where you would see uh, some of the some of the most uh, exciting and passionate plays made. Wow. There it and is. that was yeah. my thing. Like people play with so much passion, so much flair for the game. That was the thing. They had so much flair. Mm-hmm. Uh, the behind the neck, the spin moves, and, and that's like, man, I gotta get that. And the only way I can get it is when they left the floor, when they left the court, which <laughs> is probably about seven p.m. And I could go on in and then and, and, do see what I could do, you know, against my friends. And, and, and we all did the same thing. That's right. And see, and and, and that's and that's like you say that the ironic part about that is the fact that. That's how most of us growing up did it. We all hooped it with each other, and we saw older guys do something. And then as soon as they left, let me work on this. Or as you walk into the park with the ball, you like you you doing. That's but, what, yeah. But you 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 got some little bit more creativity than just the average yeah. dude, man. Well, you know, a lot of believe it or not, 
Uh, I, 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 we I, gonna I, believe I stay, it. I stay, we gonna I, believe I, it. I stay, <laughs> I stay with that era, that age group. Um, we're fortunate in New York growing up. Maybe not now, the, the young kids. We were fortunate growing up. Mm-hmm. I can go to the park and watch a guy like Boo Harvey. And people probably don't remember that name. Mm-hmm. Mark Jackson, Rod Strickland, uh, At the Vern, Vern Fleming. Mm-hmm. These are dudes that I can see in the park. Every day. That's and every up. day. And I'm yeah. like, wow. I want to I want to do what they do. And then when you find out who those guys are, no, I want to be like those guys. Mm-hmm. They're right here in my backyard. They come from the same confines I come from. So those are the guys I'm going to be like. Even though I could see Magic Johnson on TV, Isaiah Thomas, all those guys, I, you would love to be an NBA guy. But no, I want to be like those guys. But then we had local heroes. A mm-hmm. guy made name, yo, man, I want to name Ice. Or mm-hmm. name, yo, yo, BJ. Yeah. Yo, I want to <laughs> be like Ice and BJ. Yo, BJ. Yo, Ice is nice. Right. So, it was so much basketball going on in New York that just the local dude around the way, you wanted to be like him. It's funny. And he wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, it's funny you say that. <laughs> I think uh, Ron Artest, a.k.a. Metal World Peace, was on TNT. Mm-hmm. And someone said, man, who's your favorite player? And he said, man, Scooney from my, my, my C-Building. Yeah. Like, said something random. I, 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 it was funny. I it was, was hilarious. I Not to, to say Kobe. Yeah, I went to Alamo's funeral. Yeah. And it was a big, nice funeral. I go outside. And, you know, there's a lot of play, playground legends. And we all just mixing them in outside. I'm looking, I'm like, man. A guy walks up. I said, man, before you even start talking to everybody, I said, man, I used to want to be like you. I used to always want to electrify this crowd. His name was the Dancing Doogie. The so I'm Dancing like, Doogie. Yeah, that was his name. Uh-huh. And every, I, was, I remember it was 1987, 88, summertime, those summer days. And I'm like, man, I, I, was, I would find my way to the front of Rucker Park. And find, I, was, I was a little kid. I would find my way to the front and I kneel down. I'm like, man, I don't care if people step on me because I got to see Dancing Doogie do his dance on them and, and, and score. <laughs> and I wanted to electrify the whole crowd like Dancing Doogie. There it is. And that's what happened. So I had told him that. He couldn't believe it. Well, I told a friend of his that. Uh-huh. So and then we finally outside the uh, funeral, his friend said, "Skip, come here, the dude's right here." I said, "You tell him what I told him." He said, "Man, dude's couldn't believe what he's what he heard, and the reason he couldn't believe it because I ended up being this big this NBA player and this this playground legend." And he's like, "Man, no way you wanted to be like me." I'm like, "Man, I wanted to be, I wanted to do dancing what you did. dudes, the dancing dudes." Yeah, and there it is. Now see, now see, like, like that right there, that's special to me. You yes. know what I mean? That's special because a lot of guys right now, who do they look up to? Who do yeah. they emulate? Because most of the time, all they're doing is training nowadays. they just training. Mm, yeah, they're not hooping. They're not playing enough. You know it's not, they don't play enough basketball. The only they're time, the only time they're going to get in the gym is when they either have a workout or practice or maybe a game. Um, again, we, again, to their credit, let's, be, let's all be honest about it. If we were in their shoes in this day and if that were everything they had back then, we had, I mean, have now. We had that back then. Mm-hmm. Do you think we'll be playing a lot? Probably and my not. answer to everybody is, no, we wouldn't. Probably not. No doubt. If no we doubt. had iPad, iPhone, iPod, <laughs> all, the, all the gadgets on TV, <laughs> yeah. so much technology. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could, we can go a step further about some of the, dist- I call those distractions to their game. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, that's just technology. What about when they go to school? Teachers is having sex with students now. Some of the young girls is fifteen talking about they going both ways. So it's so much distraction hmm. to these kids now that it's they're so gone as far as putting in the time of training on these on their craft. Mm-hmm. See, we didn't have all that. That's real. You know what I'm no, we were happy to have a beeper in which we turn what? on and off in front what? of people to make it like somebody pays them. Yeah. But no one really pays you. We just front in front of the girls. Yo, we turn it off, turn it on. When you turn it back on, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, but I gotta go to pay phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you had to have a quarter to go to the pay phone. You know, no doubt. Then, so hey. you know, we just showing our age on this on this on this no this, this, this episode. Hey, no no hey, when you leave, hey, I need you I need you to send me this page in thirty minutes. Yeah, yo, listen. Hit me. Don't talk to me. I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna act like I'm gonna call you and look. I'm not gonna say nothing, but that's then, just the way it and was. And then we got creative with start being able to spell words. Ooh, remember hello? <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> oh, oh no, not just that, but that uh, three zero four. Uh, turn it ho. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, we was creative. That's all we had. Hey, <laughs> hey look. The, what the best thing about all that is we 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 were we here for the evolution of technology, man. Oh, no, doubt. no doubt, no doubt. We went no from doubt. house phone <laughs> to pager to to big cell phone <laughs> to now everything, man. You could talk on your watch to the, that's a phone now. Right on. How we, about that? we here for all the, the, the evolution Trek. of technology, the Star Trek generation. So, Rafe, do you remember the first time you played an official basketball game? Like for a school, did you play like in New York, for example? Can you play I trial for the school elementary. in seventh grade? You can play yeah. elementary. See, yeah, I play. I, I remember playing. I remember. I remember. It's funny, man. I uh, God bless mm-hmm. the dead again. With some 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 tough things going on in New York City. My gym teacher was a coach from an elementary school, and I uh, it was I was in 
fourth grade, and he was coaching the team, and he was only like, man, we only, I'm only taking fifth and sixth graders. I'm, I'm sitting like, whatever, Mr. Vaughn. God bless his soul. Amen. Uh, and I'm like, man, whatever. These dudes, they not like me. But anyway, <laughs> we'll see. Do you, I still say, yeah, coach, do you ever have a tryout or you know, things like that? Uh-huh. You know, Because even at that that age of fourth, fourth grade and at that age, you know what trying out is. We, we, in New York City, you, you find out all this early young age when it comes to basketball because basketball is everything else there. Uh-huh. And he had a little trial, and I'm dogging these dudes, and I'm like, listen, I bet that fifth and sixth grade stuff is pretty much out the window. I didn't use those words, but I, I, I nodded at him like, you know what's up. You know what's up. <laughs> and, you know, and I was on the team in fourth grade. And we, we'll play against other public schools, and I'm just dogging these kids. And then, you know, by sixth grade, it was a no-brainer. You know, I was the man on that team. Uh, back then, talk that, you weren't talk. going to middle school at sixth grade back then. Right. You know, we were, we were for you, for like, first one through six was one one oh. one school. Yeah. And then seven, eight, nine was a the middle school, mm-hmm. uh, middle school in New York, uh, and you. But you could leave at the eighth grade if you qualify for co- uh, high school, uh, uh, and that's okay. what happened to me. I left my middle school at, at, in, after eighth grade, so I was in ninth grade uh, at high school, uh-huh. and I, I, I was on the varsity team. So, so you had this kind of bravado. I'm thinking fourth grade. I was, I was kind of like a chill, kind of quiet dude. No, no, in you, fourth no, grade, no, you had the bravado. No, no, no. I'm, we, are, I'm, I was chill, but, I, but when it came to the basketball, it's like, oh, so don't tell you, me I got that these dudes are better than me. You know, yeah. and that was, you know, and again, it, it's come up from where we grow up. It's coming coming from where we grow up at, and you know, you weren't going to be able to. Excuse me. You weren't going to be able to be on a court. You weren't going to be able to play in the park if you didn't have that confidence and that little yeah, arrogance yeah. about you. Because you, no that's what, again, people don't understand. I try to explain this to everybody. Like basketball is everything that's in New York. It, people aren't playing football and baseball at those ages. Not no you, doubt. you might play a little pop one, but he wasn't serious about it. Yeah. You only doing because okay, it's a pop one team in the neighborhood. Y'all want to play? Okay, I'll do it. But you want to do? It. I play to. little league, but I would when it got like after we got to the playoff, the coach like, hey, y'all want to try out for the the little league all star team? Now we. Done. Done. We're going basketball starting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, no. Yeah. and that's the way it was. Basketball is everything. So, so let's talk. Let's talk about this. Let's balance this out a little bit. When did you start hitting that block? How were you when you started hitting that block and being like, "Look, I'm out. I'm, I'm out all night. Basically, I'm kicking it." <laughs> oh, you know uh, that you, at twelve years old. 12? 12, 12, 12 years old. Uh, twelve, thirteen. That's when you know you start. Like, you know life. Reality hits you face on. You know, those are things that we're uh, faced with. Again, going in inner cities. Like he's from Chicago, so, you know, you guys know. Yeah. Um, we. We. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, listen, never, I don't, I don't, know, I don't never say like it. I'm just yeah, quiet. Okay, cool. Just, yeah. That's something you can't be quiet about, say. man. Exactly. I'm not ashamed. Especially in this day and age. What's it. going on in Chicago? You can't, you can't be quiet about this. I'm definitely not ashamed. <laughs> but no, but That's you know, at 12 or 13 years old, man, reality hits you in the face. And, you know, your dad done left the house. And, you know, you could see your mom and them, like, struggling. You realize, hey, look. The only way I'm we gonna eat and put clothes on our back and then do something is we gotta get out here uh and you know get it. Make right sure or wrong, happen. we gotta do what we have to do, man. And that was the balancing act for me, man. Trying to juggle being in the streets and playing ball and going to school. And then I realized you can't do both. And you had a mean dice game. Oh, no. dice games. Which was mean, serious. man. It was serious. I uh Which that's what it plagued me from I was always ineligible. Uh my junior senior year I pretty much didn't play because of being absent from school, gambling in the school. So I went back to my old school not too long ago, and, they, they, and they, the same security guard still there, man, which is amazing. Wow. After all these years, and he said, "Man, I'm still kicking kids like you off the staircase." I said, "Hey, it worked out for me in the long run, no but uh, please get him off the staircase and let him know that that's not the, the route to go." Favorite dice game? What you what y'all play? Like? CeeLo. three yeah, dice in New York. Three, three dice, yeah. We'll play we'll play craps, but CeeLo's our big thing in the East Coast. CeeLo, uh, CeeLo, that, and, right. that, and that's why I ask because I'm I'm just I'm just a craps guy. Yeah, no, nah, we'll play some craps. Uh, we that? actually we'll we, I tell everybody we play it we play craps better in New York than most places because we're not gonna sit there and take uh, a straight bet on our fours and tens and our, <laughs> nah you're gonna give us two to one or our five and our five and nines you have to pay the, uh, play the odds and that's how we play the game how it should be played see like in y'all city in, in some city if I throw a five the only thing they're gonna try to say is oh you, you wanna bar the five like no I don't wanna bar the five <laughs> no you're straight five or five to nine no hey. I want you to lay 150 to my hundred and I make this five and that's hey, how we play. For y'all listening, you get <laughs> dice, some, dice. Hey, rewind that. You hey, might have to go game. back. You get some dice education right here. And you might have to go back on that yeah, one. Yeah, we ain't talking man. about Monopoly dice, baby. We talking about them things, them hard ones, baby. Hey, <laughs> shoot man. the five, bet the ten. Hey, yeah. but no, that that that's an interesting concept right there all through all that. I mean, as far as your life and how you came up now. 
tell me this on from a personal perspective. How how was your how was your family involved with your basketball? Uh, unfortunately, not very involved, man. You know, again, my grew up. My dad, you know, was uh, strung out on drugs. My dad passed away recently. Uh, he was strung out on drugs. My mom oh, had to work tight, like just around the clock. Mm-hmm. And you know, myself, my sister, uh, my brother. You know, uh, we had to really almost fend for ourselves. How was you living? Y'all uh, living in a four bedroom? Man, living. We lived in one bedroom with four or five of us. One bedroom apartment. Man, it, it is what it, it was. What it was, and it is what it is. No <laughs> doubt. You know? And we had, look again. We had to do what we had to do. Uh, again, Biggie Small said it correct. You had a wicked jump shot, or you were slinging crack rock, and that's what we did. Man. And it, we look. We don't glorify. We did it to survive. You know, people understand. There's some people doing it. To be Scarface, some people doing it, man. We some of us was doing it. Put a, a meal in our uh, stomach, uh, mm-hmm. make sure we had a coat to wear because it's winter time up here. You know, mm-hmm. some of us is doing Cold. it for the necessities. You Brick, know, we're not doing it to try to be the biggest kingpin. Nah, we just trying to make it to the next day. <laughs> you know, and people don't understand that. Like, man, we was just happy to have, get a few dollars so we can go buy each other something to eat, put a put a pair of boots on our feet because it's too cold, and just make it to the next day. Hmm. What was y'all wearing? What boots was y'all Every wearing? Timberland. Timberland's Tim's. big from 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 in the, in the mid eighties. It was beef big. And be, the, those didn't come to form until <laughs> no, sir. The beef and broccoli didn't come to form until about I want to say eighty nine, ninety ish. Those didn't really hit. But you know, when we like I said, the years I'm talking about, that's when he had the forty belows. You saw a so you saw a Tupac wedding juice. Yeah, the forty belows was big. You know, stuff like that was big, man. The chuckers, mm-hmm. uh, Timberland chuckers, uh, the three quarter. I mean, the, the mid ones. Uh, we had the Timberland moccasins, the shoe, the shoe <laughs> yeah. con. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, one thing about it, we was gonna get us some gonna clothes. Be, we gonna, we was gonna, gonna be fly. fly. Yeah, <laughs> we was gonna, we was gonna live. We, we, we're living a rat hole, but we are gonna be fly in this rat hole. <laughs> That's real. Hey, yeah. Now, 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 talk about the the different style of play between each borough because it's obviously all different. You no, know, the game basketball is gonna end up. It depends who you are. It's gonna be the same kind of. You know, we all gonna play that flair and that passion. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bronx. They had, like again, they, the Bronx had guys come out. You had the Ross Stricklands. Mm-hmm. You know, Walter Berries and all that. You know, we had the the Mark Jacksons and the, the uh, Kenny Andersons, Kenny Smiths. So well, they, they, they they well, styles was, they styles was was uh, uh, pretty much kind of the same. If you look at them. You know, they they just knew how to handle that ball, pass that ball, and they just had an IQ of the game. See, I always thought that the Brooklyn dude was supposed to be much more grittier and tough. No, no, that's the lifestyle. The lifestyle. See, you're talking about the lifestyle. Not no, the lifestyles guy. are different. Okay. Harlem is more flashy or fly. Yeah. They think they invented them. Brooklyn is gritty. They more about that 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 fighting, that get that that sticking up stuff. So was the Bronx at that time, you know, South Bronx. In Queens, we were more in between at all. You know, we we want to be fly one minute, we want to be gritty and grimy one minute. So we, it's the, the the lifestyle the, the, the people were uh in the Bronx are different. So so people are you, you always were mindful of where you where you were all the going time. all the time. But now when you when you got the name Skip to my Lou, did that give you a pass? To be no, able no, to go no, no. Growing up, you still mindful of where you playing ball at, right? Because you, when they get wind that you're from Queens, you playing a tournament in Brooklyn. Oh, all hell breaks loose. Uh, they they not they don't want you to get the best of their 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 favorite player or mm-hmm. their guy. You it, we we got in the fights. We got mm-hmm. chased to the subway, but that's just how it was, you know. And and I, I remember <laughs> I'm in the Bronx, and we we only had we had we only had six players, and the whole time we warmed up, you hear the crowd, and they like, man, y'all about to get kicked, you know. They want to say using that word, but they like, man, you know, they, they yo, you about to get yo this, that, and the third. We smoking these guys with six players, we smoking them, and one, one of us went to the basket hard, and, and they fouled us, and then the dude fouled me. So I looked at my team, and I said, listen, man. Y'all better get, we're going to get the running, we're going to get the running out of here. Why, why, Skip? Listen, man, this dude found me again like that, man. I'm just swinging. I'm just letting you know. We got to grab our summer, and sure enough, that's what happened, man. We It just so happened, we ran out that building and had to get to that subway. The train was coming at the same time. Oh. So we was able to hop the turnstile. We didn't pay our fare. We had to hop the turnstile, and that train was coming. We had to get, to get on that train while they all chased us, and that oh, train my. took off. And the whole ride from Queen, Brooklyn to, I mean, Bronx to Queen, they all looking at me like, man, Skip, you stupid. Listen, man, I want to take another foul. <laughs> I was taking another foul like that, man. Yeah. Just, why? just because we kicking their butt. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's, it's a lot of story, but that's just people didn't want another borough getting the best of their borough. 
That's just the way it was. That's that pride, man. They didn't no want doubt. That. And I'm, I'm talking about, and I'm talking about people that don't. They're not even playing the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. they in the crowd, <laughs> right? <talking laughs> right, trash. right, it's right. Different right. Than, <laughs> I'm playing against you, and, and and you feel I'm getting the best of you, and oh, I did a, a cheap shot to you, and you want to get it on. That's yeah. different. But you talking about people in the crowd want to get it on. So it's like, man, yo, Buggy, get his yeah. hands back, Buggy, yeah. get him. Oh, fuck. Hold on, Buggy, go, yeah. go back. That's how they it was. coming at you, huh? It's a, we ain't you, having that. <laughs> I remember one time in Rucker we got into a brawl with all like Kareem Reed, all these dudes, Kareem the Harlem Reed. dude. We got into a big brawl, like police. And the, I'm gonna tell you about this brawl. At this time in Rucker, when I was playing, I got the big main attraction of it. People were stopping their day to come out. Like people were hanging off the tree, hanging on top of buildings, hanging on the bridge to the watch vibe, the environment. Yeah. They were doing all like every day. Like I didn't know of them. Like man, they, they to me they crazy. But now I look at it now, like man, I captured the hearts of people mm-hmm. back then. But back then, a 15, 16 year old kid, I'm like, man, y'all are crazy. <laughs> I ain't hanging no bridge. I'm not standing on no top of no roof to look at nobody play. I don't care if Joel come out here. If I miss it, I missed it. <laughs> to them, it's like nah, they're not missing this. They're not missing skits. My place to be. Uh-huh. So you know, police out there like, listen, this park's capacity. They stand everywhere. They everywhere. Police is out there. And then we get into a, a melee on the court. And guess who runs first? The police, police took off. Like they, y'all kill yourself. <laughs> Oh wow! So I'm like, yo, I never saw nothing like this. Y'all kill yourselves. We getting out of here. And that's what happened. Stop, in that's what happened in Rucker Park one day, man. <laughs> so, All of them. So man, look. Speaking of Rucker Park, we, we're gonna ask. You, we're gonna take a quick break, right quick. Think about this because Mo likes me to ask questions after we come back. Mm-hmm. And so I won't ask you this question until we come back. All right, gotcha. <laughs> Summer Podcast. Hey man, this is Mo Elrod. Hey, this is the reckless as ever. Moneyball. I'm all alone. This is the summer. You know it's hot in here. It's the summer. Keep it saucy. All about that basketball, baby. Bring you some of the best content in the basketball industry. And keep it extra flavor. Don't come up with it. We're gonna keep it real. We bring you the best content. Interviews, celebrity guests. Subscribe now. It goes down. Bingo. We back in here. Yes. It's fire, though. It's hot up in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's summer. Yeah, yeah. So, Ray, before we left, I wanted to ask you this question. So you 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 hit them, y'all ran, you got on the train. Who do do you remember anybody that was on that team? Do y'all communicate? Or anybody was on that team? How they go down? Man, my friends was on the other team. Let's be clear. <laughs> it was Cameron, Mace. They were on that team. We was in. We were friends. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. The yeah. rappers, Cameron and Mace. Like this, they, Dipset. they my buddies. They, <laughs> Bad boy they, those entertainment. Are my friends, those my boy. But we were, like I said, we were. 14, 15 years old, you know, just, you know, teenage acting, acting like teenagers. And that's what happens one of them days, man. Cameron had a game? Yeah. yeah. Cameron could play. Mace had a game. Yeah. Mace, Mace had a game. Mace had I, like I was saying, it was the, listen, basketball is in your blood when you are born and raised in New York City. <laughs> so those two things, like, do we, they were on traveling teams. Like, they travel. Like, they were on our team. Like, whenever Stephon Marbury's on our, on our teams and we travel, we'll, we'll go. We, actually, we traveled to Chicago when we were kids. Uh, they used to have this tournament called Small Fry. Yeah, yeah real, where, where they put they put the rims or they lower the rims, rims. Like, like Biddy. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cameron was on our team. Mace was on my team. We went all the way to Chicago and we lost to the Puerto Rico team. Yeah, that's how big this that small fry tunnel was. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. So, when do you, at what age do you remember playing on your first like summer basketball to select basketball team? Like you played for Guy Charles for Guy. Guy you know, you, with the Panthers, with the, with the Panthers. Like, well, you, again, New York, you you're playing a summer traveling team all the time. At any point, you mm-hmm. could, it could be when you're a little kid, or you could be when you're a teenager. So yeah. you know, like I said, I, I was ten years old, eleven years old. We went to Chicago mm-hmm. and played. You know, we went to Philadelphia. We went to you know places. You know, so you tried, and I'm not talking about travel. flying. We took the Amtrak. Mm. That's when Amtrak was big. You know, money people didn't have money. We took the Amtrak from New York to Chicago, mm-hmm. and then that's when you can go to the front of the train, get your meal, go up there, get your good burger, come back, <laughs> and then you know. Again, we 10, 11 years old, so we just running up and down the cart, just running up and down, acting a fool, playing tag, hide in between, because we used to the train, you from New York, so we hide in between the carts, you know, which is dangerous, but we live on the danger side, but when you're a young kid, man, you know, you, you might be on a select team, you know, my high school days, uh, 
I traveled once in the blue because I was always ineligible, not going to class and, you know, put myself in a bad predicament in the summertime. I can't, so I'm always going to summer school. So, I, you know, I didn't travel too much. But then at that, I, I kid you not, I didn't need it. <laughs> I just felt my game was that I didn't need to travel. Uh, it's no need for me to go. Uh, and again, I was a kid in the street in New York City, so I loved being home anyway. Mm-hmm. Who, who was that one person that was kind of in your ear like come on right you gotta gotta get the class man you gotta do your work you man. know you gotta get this done and every uh, everybody that came across a lot man uh good partner of mine mike bell he passed away this year uh mike bell was definitely a guy uh he, he's he's the reason i really kept going with basketball mm-hmm. uh um I would go to his house. He'd have all these old tapes, old Nick games, old DePaul games, old St. John's game. And whenever hmm. I go to his house, I I wouldn't even come come out the room. I just keep telling him to slide me a new tape, and I just keep watching tapes. And you know, I think he realized the more I would stay in the room and watch tapes and footage, that it, the more it would keep me with basketball and at least try Focus. to figure out the school thing along the way. But it would keep me off a big one to go outside. So he he fought, he force fed me them tapes, man, and. and uh, I played a lot of tournaments for him, and in 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 his eyes, uh, he just needed to put four people on the court with me that and he felt I could win the game. And 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 you know, to him, I was better than probably the entire city at a young age. Now you went against you you went against Marbury and some mm-hmm. of the rest of those guys, and I remember the story we was talking about one time. You said you was on the corner shooting, you know, playing CeeLo. Somebody come get you. Hey, Skip, we got a game. You go. You had to go get some of them guys, yeah. and they they gave you that work. Yeah, it goes. It, that goes without saying. Uh, one well, thing I learned about playing ball in New York, man, if you play that game enough and long enough, someone's gonna catch you because you're playing against some some phenomenal ball handlers just like myself. Uh-huh. You know, Marbury would give it give it to me some days. Some days I would go back and give it to him. Sometimes I would go to his neighborhood and spend a night's nice house, and we gonna battle in front of all his friends, and they knew it was a battle every day. Uh, we're just a year apart. You mm-hmm. know, I'm, I'm only a year old, or maybe a half a year. So, mm-hmm. you know, we we only, we gave it to each other. We go upstairs, and mother would cook. <laughs> you know, I spend yeah. the night. We wake up at seven, eight in the morning, do it again. Wow. I remember battling against uh, God, Sham God, Sham God Wells, and we, we we all know how good his handle is. So yes. that's every day uh, in New York, man. You know, shopping's uh, iron. Yeah, I remember. I remember man. just watching games. I remember when Ken Anson had to play against Derek Phelps and. Derek Fels had to play against uh, Adrian Autry. Mm. And, uh, they had to play against this Khalid Reeves. So it, one thing about the guard playing the you're gonna every day you play a tournament game, you're going to face somebody. Man, I'm going to tell you, that's one of the things, one of the biggest things that I miss and I love. I, I love it, but and I miss it so much because here, whether it's in Texas or so where other parts, whether even especially in Chicago, they just don't play outside anymore, man. And it's it does tough. not happen. It's yeah. tough. And it's it is hard to get that type of environment to teach kids to have that type of feel mm-hmm. and understanding for, and that passion for the game. Because how can you have a passion for the game if all you're doing is training every day? Right. You, you have a passion to get your ass out of training. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm, right. I'm trying. You know, mm-hmm. What is this for? Right. What is this for? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think the good thing about us, again, different errors too, uh, we also have to factor that in. I think the greatest thing, like, some, of the, some of the things that playing outside has done for me, man, is, is one – it, it, it helped me, you know. I'm, I'm able to deal with any crowd, you know. There so when I is. played in college and I played with in, in the NBA, the things that people yell and say to try like, please, man, I heard I worse. death threats. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. been chased. I've been hit with <laughs> bottles. What could you possibly say or do to me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Coach over there ramping and raving on the sideline and kind of pro man, sit down. We got this. You know, those are the things that playing outside helped me deal with. Like, mm-hmm. man, we're in control of this. We mm-hmm. have this. You know. uh and it made you tougher. Mm-hmm. And I think nowadays, also, you couldn't back down from right. any challenge or any situation because you can't come people, back outside. Yes, right. You couldn't come back outside, <laughs> and the people that you got to go home with, they won't let you hear about it. You, know, you cannot hang out with us no more. You're running from people, like you know. So at the end <laughs> yeah, of the day, no doubt. At the end of the day, it, yeah, it's dude. Is that the way to live? No. That's, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, that's what I take from it. It made us strong, made yeah. me stronger, stronger, stronger person, a stronger man. And I'm able to deal with certain things. And I think these kids are missing that. No doubt. And most of all, me, they're missing the competitive drive because I don't when you play in certain AAU leagues, it's a kid, he, you can see him back down from that kid that's supposed to be that that next dude. Oh, yo, he's got a ranking. So you now you shy you away got a from mixed yeah, on you, uh, you, you saw his YouTube mix, yeah. and now you shy away. And when we were coming up, if somebody said us it was nice, I, I got him. Yeah, yeah. I let me him. see. The yeah. respect yeah. factor is different. Like you, you look for that opportunity where nowadays they 
they're the wanted. They say they want it, but they really afraid yeah, you, of. You, you got your. Want you wanted to get your name off of his name. Absolutely. His name. And nowadays they see his name and they let him have it. Let they him, let have him it. make it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Let him keep it. They give him that instant respect, instant mm-hmm. credibility, like it's actually just and been validated. It's ain't, real. Ain't done nothing to tell that kid like, oh, I can't guard him. <laughs> and he could get. You can get your name the way he got it. Is Absolutely. word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Someone told such and such who do the rankings that he's nice. So yo, we're gonna put him way up there. Mm-hmm. And, so, and that's what happens nowadays mm-hmm. when we were coming up. No, you had to do some work on. On, on you, many me. occasions, like listen, okay, you did good this year, son. We still got you rated number seventy-two. <laughs> now come back, <laughs> yeah, come back. Now, you know, fast forward. Now we can get back. I know Mo, Mo got he he be hyped on it, but let's talk about how you actually got out to California to JUCO. I know that uh, <laughs> Gee, you was playing a lot, and I know Gee Charles talked to us a lot. He's talked about. It. He said you you had played, you had ran with him with the Panthers mm-hmm. and running mm-hmm. and ball. But he said you was a special kid, and he wanted to make sure he tried to give you a great opportunity. And special, not meaning special ed, y'all. So let's get it crazy. I, I was. Uh, I got special it. Special talent, y'all. He, he still had it made. <laughs> special ed, yeah, you know, special stand-up. ed, y'all. <laughs> so, so Gee said, you know, and you va- verify this, validate this. You know, he said he came to you and told you, Ray. You you gotta get up out of here. Well, what happened with, with Gary Charles? He this I, I want to say that summer. This is actually it's just summer '94, right? Mm-hmm. It's summer '94, and you know I'm doing my thing all throughout the New York City. City's going crazy. Ray Ray Falls gets in my loo, whatever. But little do everyone know, Ray ain't had no school. So you know I'm just living the life in New York City. So the summer's winding down. It's getting to August, and Gary's. I mean, what are you gonna do? In my estimate, you know the the famous word back then, man. I'm chilling. Hmm. You know, so hmm. to guy like man, yo, dude, I really never haven't been out of New York City that you know as much. So going way across the, the United States, I mean, I don't know about going out there. So he been had this this thought that Ray, I'm going to send you to the college. That that was midsummer. Now it's getting closer to school starting. And he's still calling me about it and pulling up on me like Ray, you got to go. I'm like, man, I'm chilling. I'm chilling right here on the block. I'm chilling, man. I don't know about going to school. School starts. The day school starts. Gary's like, listen, man, I talked to this coach. We getting you a plane ticket and you got to go. So I'm looking at my friends. I'm like, man, you know what? Forget it. If I don't get on this plane, I'll go. I'm just going to be here and doing nothing all winter long. So I just took one bag. I, didn't, I think I put one pair of jeans in the bag. I think I just got on the plane and I went to the school. Gary's excited because he didn't think I was getting on this plane. He's like, man, Ray, you know, he talked fast. I right, I think you, I'm so happy you go. They're going to pick you up. I'm like, somebody better pick me up. I got on this plane. You know what I mean? I can't turn around like it's around the corner where I can just talk. Well, we're not in New York where I can just get on a train and be like, man, I'm coming back home. You know, I got to wait till somebody put me back on the flight. You know, <laughs> there was no buddy pass and all that stuff back then. That's why I had to pay $700 to be back there. So, uh-huh. you know. And I went out there at school. So now it's the second day of school. I go Which on school campus. is this again Ventura, Ventura Junior College. Mm-hmm. So the second day of school. So I go to coach. You know, hey, you know, I had to let them tell me about the classes. You know, so this is your schedule. We're going to go to guidance counselor so you know exactly everything you're taking. Uh, they're telling me about transferable. You know, I'm like, I don't know about none of transferable stuff. Man. Right. Whatever that is, whatever. Just get me in the right classes. Let me, where am I staying, man? <laughs> Who am I with? You don't even know yeah, any of this I stuff. I want to know all this stuff in one, in one shot deal. Even if I forget, I just want to know. Yeah. So who? So then he go the coach Phil Matthews, good good good, good guy man. Phil end up coaching. Uh, actually, we won him a champ two championships. He end up coaching, getting a coach job at Nebraska University, and I think he he's back in junior college, man. Uh, I hope to get you some players, Phil. Uh, but uh, so Phil, he's telling me we already got our team. We got our team. And I'm sitting there like, so when he says we got our team, I'm ready to call Gat. Like, I'm ready to call like, Gee. You sent me this dude. Talking about he already got. But then I'm like, man, coach. I hear what you're talking about, but I'm playing on this team. So back, look, back to fourth grade again. Yeah. So when he said that, I'm yeah, back to fourth grade. Yeah, I'm back to the, the, the New York City is about to come out of me. I'm like, man, I'm on this team. So back then, in the, in the beginning of the year, y'all, you know, the coach, he's coaching the gym class, which is the gym class at that time in college was the last period or uh, whatever. Back then. We used to have our gym class about from like one to two or two to three or something like that, right before you put that practice. Mm-hmm. So he like, yo, I use this time as my, you know, Intramural, not intramural, where y'all just play, and mm-hmm. I get to see what I got. 
And man, from the first day, man, I'm dogging these kids, man. I'm destroying these kids. And there's one kid on there, uh, uh, he's from New Jersey. I recognize him because I'm playing against, I played against him in New York, in New York, New Jersey. Uh, his name is uh, Hakeem Ward. So Hakeem out there, and he's like, man, I told him, I tried to tell him. And so he's, he's hyped up. He's going crazy. He's bouncing around the gym. And he's like, man, I tried to tell y'all. That's my man. He, I told y'all, I said, man, you didn't have to tell him. I was going to come in and do it, uh, show him. So then, then all of a sudden, we walking out of the gym coach said, uh-uh you little MF come on over here oh you on this team I said coach I knew that I just waiting for you to, to, to match Figure us up, up. Yeah, yeah. Man. And coach you know you know looking back at I ended up getting MVP the whole championship uh, not the season but the championship actually Hakeem Ward go figure two East Coast guys ends up being all everything out there going way out of California be all everything mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're friends to this day a lot of us on that team we still talk and speak to this day and it was just an amazing time out there. It was just an amazing, amazing time. And, and, and it, Phil taught us a lot, man. But one thing I had to tell him, though, and he figured out uh, till this day, he was like, man, when that first day of practice, that first day y'all placed that little, that little pickup ball, he said, man, uh, it was amazing. I, I was doing, I gave them kids everything. I gave them some, some street ball move. I gave them everything. everything. And then they, they even, <laughs> even my team wasn't me. It's like, man, they haven't, they never saw nothing like that. And ever. that's the beauty of it. Because again, nowadays, all I got to do is just type Alex Pugh name up and every highlight and everything will pop up. Mm-hmm. To them, you were fresh, new, oh, never yeah, the seen before, California, yeah. ever. I had, a kid on, I had a kid in Chicago on my team, a uh, big dude. His name is Curtis Gaines. A uh, big dude. Uh, he was 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, uh, and he you know, he comes to Chicago and he just uh, he was loud. He's like, ha ha, that's my kind of game, boss. You know, and I didn't realize, I didn't realize where he's from. I'm like, where you from? I'm from Chicago. I'm like, oh, Shot Town. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, man, well listen, man, y'all got Tim Hardaway, he's Isaiah, you, you know what kind of you know yeah, about the city yeah, game, yeah, you know about the yeah. street game. So it, it wasn't shocking to Curtis, man. So yeah. so check this out. When did your coach realize who he had on his team. He didn't realize until the newspaper people came in. There. Uh, what was the name? Uh, big, big time writer. He writes books uh, named Tom Friend. I want to believe his name was Tom Friend. You can probably look it up. I think, I think I'm saying it right. Mm-hmm. He was a big writer. He was mm-hmm. writing for actually the New York Times. Mm-hmm. And the Times came out there. Dang. And okay. Said, we're doing a feature on this young man because we thought that we probably pretty, that no one knew where he went. Skip we thought we lost league. him. And this mm-hmm. is a big, huge... And, you know, you, the history of playground players around New York is big. You know, you got guys that made a ton of money on the streets of New York, but they were big-time ball players and told the NBA to kiss their behind. Right. Like, I'm making more money than this contract. Pee Wee Kirk. You got guys that were big-time hustlers that pull up pull up in, in almost Rolls, cars like Rolls Royce and pull up to the playground game. So the NBA stuff didn't mean much to them because the, the money was different. You mm-hmm. know, so you know, they were making more money on the streets. So... The, the, and then you got guys that just fall by the wayside in New York. So the, the history of New York City street boy basketball play was huge. So mm. Tom Friend came out there to do a feature on New York Times and was like, listen, y'all don't know who y'all have here. This huh. story is going to get big before you guys know it that this young man's out here. And, you know, and again, he comes out there. I'm like, whatever. Let me give you my quotes. Let me get back to playing ball. Again, you're a young kid. You these things. It. Well, I wouldn't say that because. My road and path is different, mm-hmm. you know, than the Marbury's and all these other dudes. To them, it probably meant the world to me because they played every day in high school. They played, you they, know, they, they did all the camps and everything. Yeah. I didn't do all that. I'm like, man, I'm the kid from around the way. That's what I want to be. I'm cool with just busting behind and keep it moving. Like, Rub you know, up the game. Yeah, like we bust each other butts on the court every time. It's nothing. We ain't thinking. We talk trash and we walk down the street to the corner store and you want to juice? Get a quarter water. Yeah, you want a quarter water? <laughs> you want a 50 cent sundew or 50 cent soda? Yeah, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mean? That's mm-hmm. what we do. That's you want a $2 hero? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's what it. So he came out there and did a big feature on me and the coach realized, who the hell do I have? Who are you? And look, the rest was history, rest, man. Yeah, yeah, rest who was are history. you? And you did it. The rest was his. His man. mouth probably just dropped, and you was like, "Well, hell, man, just, man, coach, was, I just." Yeah. Yeah. You know what? To him, he recruited some of those guys to come out there, uh, and a lot of them were local California kids, right. up and down. Some from southern, some from northern. You know, which made me understand the region I'm in. And, mm-hmm. Oh man, Cali's big. You know, we mm-hmm. just, back then we thought of California. We thought palm trees, or good weather. I was in Ventura. It was like almost an hour outside to really kind of LA. Like, yeah, you know, it was like the valley yeah. almost. So. You know, I end up going there. Then I go to Fresno. That's in Central Central California, the Central Valley. I'm like, this, oh, this is different. You know, mm-hmm. and I had friends from Oakland. I'm like, I go up there, hang out with them. I'm like, and you know, so I've I've been 
up and down Cali from southern to northern. Mm-hmm. Like, man, I got a chance to understand how the different what's the difference between LA, Oakland, the difference between this, that, and the third about California. But he recruited Phil recruited most of those guys. So I felt when he when he realized how good I was, it's like, you know what? I got this other point going. I can't just put him to the side and just say, this kid I just picked up two days after class started <laughs> and he's going to be the guy. So what happened was coach found a way to do it and make it work. Coach decided we're going to play five minutes on, five minutes off. And that's how he did it. Okay. And that's how he did it. He said, listen, man, whatever group starts this game, the other five. So, you know, and the, but one thing he did, when games got tough and tight, he knew the five. He knew who to put on that court, and I was no. always one of the people to put on that court. And it worked. We, we we had a we had a we had a great team. I mean, we we won our first thirty two or thirty one, thirty one, thirty two games. We won our first. We were like thirty one, wow. thirty one, thirty one in a row. That we finally lost. And the reason we lost because uh, again, knowing myself, the clown of the team, playing around before the game, not taking other teams serious, and we end up dropping the game. And then we end up we didn't lose another game to win the championship. <laughs> That's big time. <laughs> now, do you think that? If you would have stayed on the East Coast, you would have had a different type of influence because you way. Well, it depends from where Queens. you know. We have junior college in New York City. Yeah, you know, we have Monroe. We have all these different FI at the time. FIT was big. Uh, fashion suits, technology. I was big. Because the reason college. why I ask you was that because sometimes it's good to get away. No, no, from no. Your no, no, no that's you know perfect saying? because that's what I preach to these kids now. Excuse me. That helped me. Mm-hmm. You know, not only with basketball but with life. It helped me, man. Like really, it's another world outside of New York City. People understand. A lot of us in New York City, we think New York City is that's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the world, man. This is what's up. This is the best thing in the world. That's like, all we, you know. We could do everything all hours of the day. We can get anything we want at any time of the day. We don't think we think this is the world. Like just to go to Philly. Oh, Chicago was different to us. Like, yeah. man, y'all country to us. Like, man, what y'all, y'all, y'all right. sound funny. Right, right, right. You know, and that's the thing. But you realize you travel enough through through basketball. I travel so much that, man, we all sound different and come from different parts. And, 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 and there's a different there's a different way of life and a way of upbringing when you go to some of these other parts. And, you know, although there are things that are the same. Right. You know, the same things that we have going on in New York is going on in Chicago and Philly and mm-hmm. D.C. And, and L.A. and Detroit. No you know what? I mean, you'd be surprised, man. New York's so big. You'd be surprised. There's so many people. There's some people in New York. Like, I, I know growing up in Queens that never been to Staten Island, brother. Mm. I can tell you right now, I only been to Staten Island. Maybe I count on one hand how many times in my lifetime, and I'm born and raised there. Wu-Tang. Mo can tell you how many times he left the South Side to go to the West Side. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, Stay where you at. <laughs> now, now, when you left uh, Ventura... You went to Fresno State. Fresno City. Fresno City. I went from Fresno. one junior college to the next because Coach now, Todd was recruiting now, me. Now, somebody, didn't they hide you out? Somebody tried yeah. to hide well, you. Well, Coach Todd recruited me. <laughs> Coach Todd recruited me. It, actually, it really, that was his way of recruiting people. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you're recruiting at a junior college rank, no one thinks much of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's different trying to recruit a kid from a McDonald's or America. It's, that, that's just a... A, a natural recruitment, but when you got a kid, see back then junior college, getting kids to junior college was big. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the, I mean, I remember Sean Marion was in junior college at the time, Keon Clark, all these guys were in junior college when I was in junior college out there. Mm. You know, yeah. we were all in junior college, and getting them kids from junior college was huge back then. And he came to one of my games. I think I had twenty four points, eight assists. It was a playoff game, a junior college playoff game out there in California, and he was like, "Man, I'm coming back to basketball. I want to recruit you." The only way for me to, to him to assure that I would go, that's when he came to my game. Summertime came. I went, you know, as we all go home in the summer. Mm-hmm. Coach Carr came to New York in the summer. Like, listen, I wasn't playing around. <laughs> I'm like, listen, I'm dead. This, I'm dead serious. Mm-hmm. And I, me, I'm like, man, I'm a big UNLV fan. I'm like, man, this man, this man really coming to Rucker Park with guys are smoking weed and cursing each other out. And he's sitting right there. And he's like, listen, man, what's what I want you to do? He had the game plan down and. It worked out. He's like, man, you're going to finish up at Fresno City Juco right next to me, which is right down the street from Fresno State. After that, you could come to Fresno State, and there it is. we're on our way. Wow. That's, that's crazy. how I was, man. When did you? But, you know, the, the, the backtrack is just that if he didn't do that, you had, I was getting recruited. Again, I was getting recruited. when I, That first year, I was getting recruited by all the California schools. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, you're talking about USC. I remember Seth Greenberg. He was at Long Beach State. He was sending his people to Ventura. Like, man, we got it. Because he was big on recruiting kids out of New York mm-hmm. uh, anyway. So he's like, man, I got to get this guard. If I get this guard to come to Long Beach State, we we on our, we, we, you know what I mean? Uh, 
UNLV would recruit me, and I know Top definitely when he realized he can get me. I mean, I can't lose him to UNLV, my <laughs> old former school. Uh-huh. So you know, it, it, it was it was it was cool. I, mean, I had again coming out of junior college, I had like track. My college coach in junior, I had to hide all my mail. Hmm. I I had, I didn't like from Ventura to Fresno City. I didn't see no mail. And I realized why, because they, would know they had to hide it. But they what little do they know is I knew that the people were coming to see because they would show up at the games. Yeah. Those same coaches. Like, man, I, not, not to be disrespectful of my teammates, but I knew they weren't coming to see those guys. So I already knew who they were coming to see. So at yeah. the end of it, it's like, and then when I finally signed my 11th tent, that's when my uh, coach, uh, Coach Steve Cleveland, Friends say he finally let me see. It's like it was, just, it was just garbage bag after garbage bag and all these people. Mm. And some had personal handwritten letters. Like, man, please, we can get you at that, that, school. We, we, you know, you'll get us over the hump. So Steve was with Tark. You make it pretty sure. much. <laughs> and I helped Steve get a job. He ended up leaving Fresno City and signing with BYU. And he was the head mm-hmm. coach of BYU. And then he ended up going to Fresno State himself after a couple of years of BYU. Yeah, so he was with Tark. I was a helping helping hand and get <laughs> no a few doubt. people. Uh, yeah, a few people some jobs. Huh? What so, was it about a uh, uh, Tark? The fact that you Tark probably is the greatest, the greatest uh, coach I think that uh, these young kids uh, had, and I think these, these young kids are gonna miss. Uh, um, he's about helping the kids. He's about doing everything. It's all about the the the, the kid, the student athlete. Uh, if you notice nowadays, kid a kid will get a traffic ticket, right? A kid, a college kid. He's let's say he's an athlete. He'll get a traffic ticket, and what's the first thing these people want to do to the kid? Kick him out of school. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, why is that? Because that's the easiest thing for them to do. Right. The hardest thing is to take time out your so-called busy schedule, which they're not busy to and try to educate the kid on. Listen, the do's and the don'ts, the rights and the wrongs and, and, and try to put him, get him some type of help about understanding. Uh, listen, man, this is what you have to do going forward. You, you know, because you gotta remember a lot of us are in our late teens and trying to become men and women on college. Still, campus, still a kid. Right? We're also at a point where in college where this is the first time we're free. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, man? I get to go. I stay in this. You know, some people stay in dorms. Some people stay like off I stay campus. off campus. Yeah. So now I'm like, man, I, don't, I could come and go, and I could bring this girl in here any time of the day. Hey, listen, homeboy, Ma, you my roommate. Hey, take one for the team, man. Go to uh, what's the name of the house? Let me rock out with uh, homegirl. So, <laughs> right, right. But we're, we're young. We're not realizing that yo, we here really for a purpose. So you tend to to deviate from the, the task game plan, at hand. right? Yeah. You get tasks on the game plan at hand, mm-hmm. and. See, you can't find many coaches do that nowadays. You may, in fact, in fact, you may not find one that's willing to put their job and life on the line for the sake of a kid and talk man, with. Uh, don't no. get low started yeah, right now. Yeah, don't yeah. don't get low started I, I right get, now. I get, I get, I get no, you, on you that. don't find one. I, I, I don't. To me, I, I see kids left and right on the bottom line of ESPN. Uh, such and such had a traffic ticket, and y'all gonna kick him out of school? Okay, kick him off the team. Coach was big about that. Y'all want to kick him off the team. But don't kick him off out of school. That's a mm-hmm. life change. Because right. now, all of a sudden, does he, what does he learn? Mm-hmm. And that's bitter, what and I, think, and I think that's the biggest thing about Coach. And that's the biggest miscon- uh, what things got what they had misconstrued about him. They try to act like he didn't care. I mean, Coach will lose his job, man. Coach will give a he'll, he'll, I've had coach. I've seen and watched Coach go to the board and let him know that, listen, we have to save a kid life. But if y'all kick him out of school, then I'm going to step down. Mm. And next thing you know, that kid is in school that's because huge. at the end of the day, they realize that's the most important thing is to save a kid's life, man. And these nowadays, I, I dare you to get in trouble at one of them schools. And that's why a lot of parents nowadays they need to ask some of these coaches, "How far are you willing to go for my child? How far have you went for a previous player?" Because I you look at but pew, you know what, pew, Lord, not just that. Look at how far you came to get my kid there. See, we 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 mm. forget the thing about recruiting. Yeah, yeah. They will come to your house. And these are supposed to be God fearing people. Mm. These are supposed to be all they, they they'll sell you about all this stuff. Mm. They will come and look you in your eye and tell you everything about how we're gonna man your kid is gonna love. We're gonna take care of your kid. Keyword. Mm-hmm. We're gonna take care of your kid. Mm-hmm. Then my kid gets in trouble out there. And the first call, the thing you say on the phone call to me is, uh, we gotta get out. rid of him. Yeah, mm. you're gonna get rid of my kid. You just told me to take care of my kid. Wow. Again, he's a young kid trying to learn to be a man, and we put him in your hands, and you're supposed to do that to help him become a man. Mm-hmm. Is quitting on him helping him become a man? No doubt. Right. Talk hands not quitting on you. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's big. Wow. Yeah, I, I must. I must. I ain't gonna go there. I'm just gonna cheer because this is your day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your day. Yeah, you let, 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 let Rave have it. Man. But no, you know what? Though sometimes <laughs> people, if they don't hear it from somewhere, they're never gonna hear it, man. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, they should have a panel about in college about that to these coaches. 
You guys are getting paid five million, seven million dollars a year, and you gonna kick a kid out of school. Mm-hmm. That's sad, man. Uh, that kid is the reason you one of the, one of the reasons you're making this money. Yeah, man. No what? Yeah, what? You know what I'm saying? He so why, 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 why do that? All these oh, kids, all is, these previous kids have helped you to get to where you right. are right now. So now that you're there, you're not willing to sacrifice mm-hmm. anything. Nor anymore. would you accept their call. They call you. They want to be assistant. He just won you a national championship, and you want to take this man's call. Major key alert. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, it's crazy, man. No, no, you know, I'll give you another thing about college, how crazy college is. And, 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 and having said all this about college, I would love to be a college coach. That's the great thing about it. <laughs> Here I am. Same Plug. But, 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 but at the end of the day, look where they take in college now. Mm-hmm. I remember when we, we were signed, guys were signing uh, scholarships. Mm-hmm. It was four years. Right. That look what, the, look what those coaches, look what the coaches went and talked to these people about. And this is documented. They don't want to be on the hook to be stuck with a kid for four years if he's not paying out to turn out to be a good the player that we thought he's going to be. So mm-hmm. now in college, it's yeah, for one year. Because year. Year year. Year. it's year not year. about mentoring. Because it's not a scholarship anymore. It's a contract. Hmm. And to be honest with you, it's always been a contract. We The scholarship is the word. It's just a replacement word. But it's always been a contract. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why do you think that's why there's all this stuff about not paying them? Think about football players. You don't think them kids should be paid and they playing in 100 plus thousand seat arenas, packing it every week. Every for you. week. And this is, you know, you know what brings in the money for like schools like, a, let's say, a LSU. The basketball program ain't doing it. Mm. Mm. Football. Right? Let's look at Penn State. Athletes. Let's students. look at Penn State. Athlete. You think oh, yeah. the basketball program brings in money for Penn State? No, football. Definitely. So when the first. whole. Sandusky thing went all out there now. Did you think Penn State flinched at any penalty? You can't have this scholarship. You can't play the bowl game. But we can still play, can we? Yeah, you can still make all the money <laughs> in your 100,000 seat plus venue. So we're like, oh, okay. Cool. We good. We, we still get parking. We still get the, the concession. We still, people going to buy these jerseys and you're going to buy these tickets. Mm. What did they lose? They lost nothing, nothing. because they wasn't going to make it to those bowls probably anyway. Because no one's, they, it's hard to recruit the good kids to go to Penn State and you playing the Big Ten. Mm. You got to go against Michigan State, Michigan, all the Who's going to Penn State? <laughs> That's real. Man, you just went all the way around the corner, dog. Won. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm Woo. telling you, man. Okay. We got to have part two about the podcast. That's, what we gotta, that's all I should let y'all know. We got to have part two or part B to the Ray Austin podcast. There it uh, is. That's all I got to We're going to have it. We're going to have it. <laughs> Speaking of part two, we're going to end this first episode right here. And then we're going to drop the next one in a couple of days. So, you listeners, you got time to share it with somebody and let other, other people to know to be ready for part two. All right. It's the summer. Bring you the best content, interviews, celebrity guests. Subscribe now. It's going down. down, down, down.